was 1.30 p.m. October 9, 1992, Zumabul, Kazakhstan. Third and fourth grade students at the Tolbai Secondary School were gathered on a patch of grass outside waiting for class to resume. As they ticked down the minutes until the end of break, some of the students looking skyward took notice of something odd. Soon the other children peered up and saw what they were looking at. Three strange objects were falling towards the ground, though they did not fall like stones or a meteor, rather these seemed to have smooth movements. They likened it to watching leaves falling. The objects themselves appeared almost like nuts, oval in shape and metallic. Each object was about the size of a pumpkin. They slowly descended right down into the courtyard in front of the children who were quite stunned at what they were seeing. Once on the ground they seemed to open quote like flowers, like petals separating. From there two creatures emerged out of two of the crafts. They appeared almost human-like but were quite tiny, no more than 12 inches tall. They almost seemed like living action figures or robotic dolls. Even stranger, when the third craft opened, three tiny dogs, or something that looked like dogs, emerged. They appeared metallic, walked on four legs, and their movements reminded the children of canines. The children examined the figures and noted that they wore metallic colored suits, possibly spacesuits. Their eyes were green and feline-like, and their sclera was quite noticeable. They had small flat noses and no ears. Where the ears would be, these creatures had bolts with springs. One boy standing near one of the crafts attempted to reach out and touch it. He was briefly electrocuted. Given how small they were, the children, rather than being frightened, actually assumed that they were some kind of new toys or dolls, and they immediately set about trying to capture them. One student, Maya Asser Avazova, claims that she actually managed to pick up one of the living dolls in her arms. Speaking to Express K newspaper reporter Galina Verbova, Avazova told her, The doll looked right into my face. She was very heavy, and she had a gray beard. Then I heard loud barking of dogs, got scared, and threw the doll. Other children also chased the creatures but could not catch them. They resorted to throwing stones at them, though they noted that the stones did not seem to hurt these little creatures. The only thing the rock throwing worked to do was seemingly anger them. One of the creatures had an object in its hand that resembled a syringe. He merely pointed it at the feet of one of the children and the kid's shoes completely disintegrated. Another child injured his arm which became covered in blood. Student Ruslan Chubanov told Verbanova that he managed to grab one of the creatures but immediately felt a blow on his face after the creature touched his cheek. Later a red spot formed on this spot similar to a burn. The children were so busy chasing the creatures around that they barely noticed when the oval objects slowly came together, connecting and forming into something resembling a miniature vehicle. They likened it to a toy tractor. The 12 inch creatures and their pets immediately rushed to the tractor and climbed inside. They then turned their tractor in the direction of a nearby shooting range. On this shooting range was a multi-meter tunnel and they quickly drove into it and apparently disappeared. At that moment their teacher Tatiana Vlasilina Staskovich, worried when they had not returned to class, went outside and confronted them. The children were all excited. They insisted that something very strange was happening. They told her of the objects, the little men, their canine companions, and the tiny tractor. Disbelieving them, Staskovich went inside and retrieved some binoculars. She pointed them in the direction of the shooting gallery, and that's when she saw it. I would never have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Staskovich told Verbranova that she saw a small figure of a man who was walking towards her. He suddenly disappeared as if he had evaporated. Then he appeared again. It was bizarre. These events transpired on October 9th. By the next day, the entire village was aware of the unusual guess. These tiny figures continued to appear to the children, the teacher, and other villagers for the next two days, 
always appearing and disappearing. It was very disconcerting to everyone. When news finally got back to journalists in Chu Valley, they were quite upset. They wondered why they had not been alerted to it sooner. They might have been able to get a reporter in the area to document and possibly photograph the creatures. The locals began to joke of the visitors, noting that they had come for their anasha, a slang term for narcotics. Reporter Galina Verbanova initially heard of the case from Antonina Pack, who was then head of the Department of Industry and Transport of the district newspaper, Chuskaya Dalina. Pack was so intrigued by the case that he notified other newspapers and ufologists in the area, hoping they would assist in speaking to the witnesses and getting to the bottom of it. Verbernova doubted the claim that the visitors had come for the Anasha. Rather, she suspected that it had more to do with lead. There was a tiny amount of lead in the shooting gallery, and she wondered if they had been there to collect it, though she was not certain. Apparently, other villagers had observed the creatures trampling around in the area of the shooting gallery. Verbernova wrote, They could have appeared right in the shooting gallery and gone unnoticed by anyone. They would have done their job without being seen. But they defiantly landed in the schoolyard just when there were children there. Their appearance was clearly designed for the children and took into account the child's psyche. Devices the size of a pumpkin, from which two robot dolls and three mechanical dogs come out. Children start playing with them, try to grab them, throw stones at them. The dolls defend themselves and leave traces of their stay on the children. A collapsed shoe, a burn on the cheek. A mechanical dog barks, i.e. imitates the barking of a live dog. And only when the children calm down, fearing to touch the beings, the three apparatuses transform into a cart on which the beings go to the shooting range. The teacher, looking at them through binoculars, sees that the beings then appear, then disappear. They then, I assume, transport the extracted lead to their base. Thus the beings perform two tasks. They show children and adults beings from another world and collect free lead for their needs. Of course, this is yet another case sent to me by Albert Rosales. He told me that of all the cases he'd written of, this was definitely one of the strangest. He was most fascinated by the fact that the aerial objects came together to form a single object, which was capable of driving on the ground. Kind of like a super advanced all-terrain vehicle. Their ability to shapeshift reminded him of the Transformers, a cartoon, comic, and toy franchise from the 1980s. Also a popular film series directed by Michael Bay. For Bernova herself seemed to wonder if the being's decision to appear as dolls, and possibly shape-shifting Transformer-like object, was directly influenced by the children's thoughts. Maybe the beings chose those forms to appease the little ones, knowing full well that their regular appearance might traumatize them. Granted, if so, then it seemed to have the opposite effect. The kids were not only not afraid of them, they actively attempted to capture them. Had the beings appeared as the typical large black-eyed greys, then most likely the children would have run away in fright. Yet they chose to appear as doll-like figures. Either that was their actual form, which I doubt, or they had chosen that form in an effort to put the children at ease, but also maybe make them less believable to adults for whom they might tell of the sighting. Who is going to believe a group of kids when they claim they interacted with some living dolls? This seems very calculated, regardless of the reason. It is very likely that if the teacher and the other villagers had not witnessed the beings themselves, the children's account would have most likely been shrugged off. Even today, some skeptics smugly dismiss the 1966 Westall schoolyard sighting and the 1994 Zimbabwe sighting involving more than 60 child witnesses. The Kazakhstan encounter is not well known, not even amongst the UFO community, but it stands as one of the stranger cases I'm aware of. Thank you.